Wales and Portugal this weekend, folks. Rugby World Cup 2023. Second meeting between Portugal and Wales, believe it or not. They played back in 1995 in a Rugby World Cup qualifying match, which finished 102 to 11. So fingers crossed this game is a little bit closer than that. We're going to go through some squads, stats, predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one might be going to go. Warren Gatland, 8th ranked Wales side on the back of that win over Fiji has talked a bit about uh, the short turnaround. It's a six-day turnaround for, for the Welsh, so they've made 13 changes to the starting 15. And, um, I mean, as far as World Cups go, the short turnarounds aren't actually this bad at this World Cup, but still, six-day turnaround, and against a team which is ranked eight spots below them in Portugal, 16th ranked. Um, yeah, I guess Wales are kind of gambling a little bit on that, you know, being a bit disjointed, as we've seen from some other sides who have made a bunch of changes. But um, yeah, we'll see how this second lot of Welsh players goes this weekend. Nicky Smith, Dewey Lake, and Dylan Lewis. That's your front row. So that's a change from last week in all three spots. Dewey Lake was obviously injured uh, for that last game, but he's back, so that's a bit of good news. They'll be looking to dominate up front, you would imagine. They're going to be looking to use their size. They're going to be looking to use their maul. All the things that the kind of Six Nations Rugby Championship teams do when they play teams that are this far below them in the world rankings. Uh, Chiunza and Jenkins is a youthful kind of second row. Chiunza is usually more of a loose forward, but he is uh, in the second row for this one. And Dafford Jenkins, uh, he played from the bench last week. He gets a start. And then Dan Lydia, Tommy Riffle, and uh, Talupa Falatel. In Lydia and Falatel, you've certainly got a heap of experience there. But then Riffle, man, from the bench, like in 20-odd minutes last week against Fiji, he came on and like made like 11 tackles. In 20 odd minutes which is a heck of a shift falatel will be looking to kind of find a little bit more space ball in hand like last week he was kept very quiet by fiji four runs five meters kind of below what we expect from tolupe falatel but um yeah we'll see how the portuguese go against the big man thomas williams and gareth anscombe's 910 so that's a new 910 combo remember they only took two halfbacks did well so thomas williams swaps with uh, gareth davis who is on the bench and then gareth anscombe who was outside the 23 for the opening game, takes over from Dan Bigger. Um, I don't feel like Gareth Anscombe is quite as uh, vocal as uh, as Bigger, so we may not see or hear so many expletives as we've all heard from Dan Bigger. I enjoyed that moment in the last game. I thought it was, I don't know, that's a bit of sports, isn't it? Although Dan Bigger's been called out from some people for being a bit over the top. Anyway, some people don't like Dan Bigger. Midfield is big. It's big. Johnny Williams at 12 and Mason Grady at 13. That's a bunch of bulk. Gats likes big midfielders. 105 kilo Johnny Williams and 112 kilo Mason Grady. Both of these guys over 1.9 meters tall. Big, big units. I mean, Mason Grady is 1.96, so he could easily be a shortish lock, like not 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 like a two meter tall bit of timber, but there are locks his size. So he is genuinely a very big human being. Reese Samet is one of the other guys alongside Falatau who keeps his starting spot on the right wing. He beat eight defenders in the game against Fiji, so he was elusive. Rio Dyer is up from the bench, and then Lee Halfbenny with that boot of his. Maybe another one for your um, fantasy teams, assuming he is doing the goal kicking. Elias Domachowski, Francis, that's your front row replacements. Adam Beard drops to the bench. Tane Basham is into the 23. Gareth Davis, Sam Costello, and Josh Adams. So five forwards, three backs for the Welsh guys. Um, Henry Thomas, I think, was the one guy they singled out for having a bit of a hamstring issue, so not considered for this game. Uh, the Portuguese side is one that I'm way less familiar with than the Welsh one. I've certainly seen these guys play the states in that rugby world cup qualifying campaign but that's probably about it uh i know from what limited amount i have seen of them that they like to spin it and when you look at their try scorers uh it is guys if you're looking at this lineup the guys to keep an eye on uh pinto the right winger he loves to score a try uh marta the left winger he likes to score a try and then uh storti the, uh, the outside back replacement. All these guys have scored tries for Portugal uh, in recent times. You'll If you watch highlights from Portugal, they love to spin it from their own 22. Um, yeah, they love the fullback, likes to have a run. Uh, yeah, they're looking to try and play some pretty exciting rugby, one would imagine. But the side itself is actually pretty stable. Like they played Australia A and lost 30 points to 17 just before the Rugby World Cup got underway. The majority of the side is pretty much the same guys. Like Thomas Appleton comes into captain side at 12. Uh, and then Stevie Sequeria is in the second row. Apologies for the pronunciation. He comes into the 23, but the rest of the squad 
yeah, it's, it's pretty stable from that side that played the Aussie A side. Um, but remember, they did beat the US prior to that Aussie A game and won pretty convincingly 46 points to 20. Uh, but their pack is a wee bit smaller than the Welsh, 882 kilos to 916. And remember, Wales mauled it a lot against Fiji. It was like nine times, whereas Wales averaged four or five mauls. So that Fiji impact's pretty big. I would expect to see more of the same from Wales in this one uh it is on at nice i believe it is a is it a 4:45 local kickoff which makes it 3:45 over here in nz in the morning i will probably watch this one delayed just because i've been a little bit crook but um yeah it should be a pretty interesting one predictions wise wells are predicted to run away with this one 34 points say the bookies and 28 points say the rugby forecast algorithm so yeah we will see can the portuguese guys run the welsh guys off their feet with their lighter pack and their quick backs or will the welsh with those big experienced forwards just be able to drive over this portuguese pack and those big mid midfielders running at the likes of hamilton and uh, lima where they're surrendering probably 10 plus kilos per guy but um yeah carl dixon's the ref He's, um, he's a bit of a loose cannon, but we'll see how he goes for this one. You guys let us know your thoughts, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.